The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And by Roca Prototype Models. We make it real. Check out their website at www.rocamodels.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for January 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we've got a good show in that we build a switchyard diorama primarily designed for outdoor photography with regular trackage in code 70 on one half and a cement apron on the other in order to load freight cars and share auto racks and other types of railroad equipment that you would see photographed on a tarmac of cement. In this video we also share with these brand new models from Roca Prototype Models. These are safe pack auto racks and they're absolutely amazing models. Also this month, Larry Harrington from Bachman Industries shared with us a lot of the new products that they're coming out with for this new year, including those amazing Dash 9 locomotives in 129th scale. They're absolutely beautiful. Also this month, be sure to check out, if you haven't already seen it, the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot every Saturday night down here in the studio with our crew of podcasters plus special guests a lot of new announcements and new products every week on What's Neat This Week in Model Railroading on YouTube. So with that, let's continue on with the rest of this January 2023 What's Neat. Hello, this is Michael Gross and you're watching What's Neat with Ken Patterson. For this segment of What's Neat, we're going to build a photographic diorama for shooting models outside. This is one that I can use over and over for a multitude of models. Now I presently have a diorama that I had built some time back for Atherin Trains. I want to guess this diorama is good, better than six or seven years old. And this was part of a double piece diorama. It used to be eight feet long and it was a scene that we built to replicate an exact switch yard. Well, as time has gone by, this has been stored out in my garage over the years, and the humidity and the moisture in the air and the drying of the air and the heat and the temperature has slowly caused the uh, ballast, and in this case, this is ground up uh, walnut shell ballast uh, from Woodland Scenics, which is standard, what I like to use all the time for scenes. And I'll probably use this ballast again, or maybe mix some real rock into it, or maybe simply use dirt and color the diorama by painting all of the track to give it that look that I want. The diorama itself is just gonna be a base for shooting freight cars, which is something that's very important that I have to do from time to time for the podcast show, or maybe the occasional advertiser that would like to have their freight cars look amazing in outdoor sunlight. So also another thing that has happened on this diorama over time, and it's just simple wear and tear, is uh, the track has uh, come loose from some of the spikes on various parts of it, on ends. Just various areas of the diorama are not doing so well when it comes to uh, being in great photographic condition for a diorama. So what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of foam underneath it. I'm going to cut it so it's about the same size as this. I like to keep the backside plain so that I can place buildings on it to uh, vary the type of scenes that this switchyard in fact can be used for. I'm going to use code 70 microengineering track on the diorama. I'm going to glue everything down with a uh, sealant that is safe on foam but yet dries clear and does not have silicone in it so that the ballast can in fact stick to the track areas as the track is then glued down into place. 
So with that, I'm going to start working on this project and see if I can get this done as quickly as I can because I've got a photo shoot coming up in three days where I'm going to need to use the brand new diorama that we're about to build. So let's see how this project turns out. So I'm cutting the diorama so it closely matches the same size as what I'm used to using and working with simply by taking a saw and cutting off the pieces. One thing that I do like to do on these th dioramas is I always like to cut off the corner at about a 45 degree angle because what that does is it allows me to get the camera in close from the side because the corner usually blocks the scene and I want to be able to get the camera in closer to the mainline trackage to get into the scene more intimately, to share and show off the model. So what I've got is I've got this simple DeWalt pull saw. These things work really good on foam. And I'm simply cutting out this corner with a saw. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to seal this foam all the way around on all sides with latex paint so I don't experience any type of foam deg degradation or foam shrinkage. I don't want the foam getting soft and starting to powder off over a period of years. So we're going to do that next. So I've painted our diorama all the way around with latex paint. In this case I'm using flat house paint. It really doesn't matter what type of latex paint you use on foam. It does the same thing. It helps seal the foam. I like to use a dark color. The darker the color, the better, because then it doesn't show up through the ballast or the dirt in the event that you miss a spot. It all blends in with nice earth tone colors. So let me finish painting this, and then we'll start establishing where we're going to lay the track on this diorama. So I'm using microengineering, code 70 weathered rail, the spikes are scaled, this track will look very good on film, and I'm laying a bit of a random pattern in that I want to be able to use each side of this diorama for different types of settings. So I've angled two main lines here that are going to go off to the sides, and I'll be able to shoot great photos from this cutoff corner looking this way up the diorama. Depending upon the sun's angle, I can turn this thing around and use it in various ways outside as I shoot it. I've got five tracks lined up, assuming that the first two would be main lines, and the second and third and fourth track here, fifth track, would then be holding tracks for background freight cars during any one given photo shoot, and I've got plenty of flat space here to lay buildings and structures if I want to break up the scene and add variety to it. So all I'm simply doing now is I'm fitting in my track. This is not track work where we actually need it to operate or run on the layout. This diorama probably will not be wired up and run. It's simply there to do still photography, which I think at this point, it'll work really good for what I've got planned out here. Another important thing to note is when you're using weathered microengineering track and you want to put two sections of it together, like I'm doing on this diorama, it's always important that if you use the weathered rail, you want to take a Dremel with a wire brush, and in this case this is a small three-quarter inch, half inch wire brush, this is quite worn down. And you, after you pull off the ties and before you put on the rail joiners, what you want to do is you want to wire brush off the weathered part of the rail because that part will have difficulty conducting electricity and solder won't stick to it if in fact you're laying your track using this track, microengineering, to use on your layout where you actually want to run a train. But because I don't have to run these trains here on this diorama, I'm simply just putting the track together with N-scale rail joiners. These rail joiners are very small, they're from Atlas, and they look really good and they're not too big, they don't take up too much space and look that obtuse when you're putting together your track work. They work really well on Code 83, Code 70, and Code 55 is what these rail joiners work well on. So that's just another tip as we move along on this project. Another thing I like to do when I'm laying my track, and this doesn't matter if it's a layout that I'm going to run trains on or if it's just a diorama as I'm building here, is I like to take a straight edge and I like to take a black sharpie and I mark where the track placement, its final position will be on the diorama so that 
after I glue the track down, I can then put it back in its approximate location as to where I want the trackage to lay on the diorama. And the black marker helps facilitate that a great deal when you're building a scene, whether it's curved or straight trackage. Just like that. Now let's talk about gluing down the track. I like to use, in the past, I've used this Quick Seal Plus from DAP. It dries clear. I've also got white here, in fact, which dries white. But I like the stuff that dries clear. It goes on white, and when it cures, it dries clear, and it's a good adhesive, whereas paint can stick to it. Well, I've had a difficult time finding this in the past year at the Home Depot where I generally go to get some stuff. And so I've discovered something else today after going through the entire store. I found this uh, clear material, also by DAP. It's called Dynaflex 230, is what they call it. What I like to do, there's two ways to do this. You can put it onto a piece of foam and use it as your palette for the glue. And then I like to take a painter's knife and I'll put the painter's knife in the material and apply it to the diorama and then lay the track into that. Another way that works really well is simply to take a bead of glue, run it up where the track's gonna go, and then I'll take the painter's knife and smooth it out and then put the track in the bed of glue, which is what I'm about to do. I've already glued two sections of track down to make sure that everything's working the way it should, and let me show you how I do this. This works for a diorama and or for a permanent layout. It's how I always adhere the track to a piece of foam, because also this uh, material does not affect or any way damage and eat the foam. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do this briefly. Now mind you, we've drawn our lines where the track's gonna go, so I've got a bit of a guide to be able to follow here, which makes it simple to do. And then I'm gonna run my bead of glue all the way down the diorama where the track's gonna go. Then I'm gonna take my putty knife, my painter's knife, and I'm gonna smooth it out to about the width of the trackage itself, just like this. Then I'm gonna lay the track right into the bed of glue and press it in and make sure everything is straight or curved depending upon what you're doing with your track work and in this case I want it relatively straight on the diorama. You can also put weights on this as it cures to let it weigh down overnight while you're waiting for this to dry. And this glue is going on white but again when it cures it will dry absolutely clear which is essentially what we want for doing this project. And then what I'll probably do is take some Rust-Oleum Camouflage Earth Tone Brown paint and paint over the trackage areas just to make sure the rail, the rail joiners, and everything is dark the way I want it to be for the final uh, setup of this diorama that we're building. So let me continue on now gluing down the rest of these tracks onto the diorama. And let's see what's next as we move along on this project.
This is also the time in the project when you want to glue down those ties that you removed to put in the rail joiners. Now all the spikes have been sanded smooth on these ties so that they'll simply slide into position into the glue. And I've got two tracks that I have not completed yet and I'll show you it's a very simple process of easily just slipping the tie underneath the rail. It's in the glue and it'll set up and it'll close that gap, that unsightly gap and everything will just look, it'll have the continuity that you want it to have. Just like that. So now we just want to let all of this dry. Everything is glued into place now on the entire diorama. It doesn't look that great, but when it dries clear and we paint over this and then cover it with ballast, it should look absolutely just the way we want it to look for an outdoor photo shoot. So let's continue on with the project. While the glue is drying, I do like to put weights on the diorama just to make sure that none of the track work pops up or nothing moves. I just want everything to be flat and weighted down until all the glue becomes cure and clear and dries. <laughs> I love it when a plan goes together, but overnight, while I was looking at the diorama and the track was being glued down and drying overnight under the weights, I decided to change this up a little bit. I would like to be able to shoot trains, especially auto racks, on a surface of cement, an apron. And so what I've done is I've created this diorama where this whole half side of it is now going to become a cement apron for loading auto racks or other railroad equipment with forklifts. So what I've done is I've taken a few strips of wood about an eighth of an inch high and I've glued them in the place creating forms of which we will fill the center area here with cement, make it all smooth with water and then take a, uh, an, a razor saw and make the flange ways for the wheels in the cement. Now this time I'm using the same type of DAP cement that you've seen me use in the past in years. It doesn't come in gallons anymore, now it comes in quarts. So it'll be a little bit more difficult to work a wide trowel into the quart. And what I may do is just scoop it out all on the surface, wet it, and then spread it as you've seen me do in videos in the past. So let's see how this part turns out. So now that I've put down some forms, and in fact I glued these down with wood glue in the last video you saw me do about two years ago, I spiked them down with pins. But I think wood glue will work in this case because this is a simple standalone diorama and it's going to look fantastic. Now, here's the cement in the quart containers. And what I'm going to do is use water and a trowel and start scooping it out on top of this diorama and make it the thickness of just the rail height all the way across the seam. And this should work pretty well. I'm also going to wet the material a little bit in the can. Just give me some moisture. I know it looks like a mess now, but it will turn out just right when it's finished. So I'm going to stop the recorder and continue to work my way through the diorama and pick this up as we get closer to the end. Now we want to take a, a 12 inch trowel in this case, wet it, make sure the surface is wet, and pull it smooth across the top of the rails and the wooden forms that I've got. Just like this. Gives you a nice smooth cement surface. Real nice.
And now we just want to let this dry. For an entire 24 hour period. So it's been about three hours since I put all the cement in place. And I've taken this hacksaw blade and I've been running it while the cement is just starting to set up. I've been running it along the inside of the rails here to clean out the flange way, which works really, really well. I've done this for years on all the sections of track so far. I also took an X-Acto knife and I cut free the wood that we use to create the forms so that I can go ahead and just peel that out as the cement sets up further. And what this will do is this will allow the air to get into the cement on the sides here on the base and help set this up. Now it'll take about 24 hours for this to dry and as you can see there's a lot of cracks starting to show on the surface and this is completely normal because what we do is we go back over the surface with a small um, painter's knife and just fill in the cracks, a little bit of water, and I'll show you how to do that as we get to that part. But so far we've got a great subsurface now to create a auto rack loading facility, and then of course the other side will simply be ballast and dirt and rock, and we'll have a diorama that can be shot on either side to give a different type of result for every photograph that I would choose to do. So let's see how this continues on. So I'm using a painter's knife here and I sprayed a little bit of water inside the container of uh, cement that I've got here. And what I'm doing is I'm going over, just like spackling you would do on drywall work. I'm going over and I'm covering up some of the various cracks on the scene. Some cracks look really good and they're acceptable, but in this case, uh, some of the larger ones, I actually want to um, patch them and fill them in now. And now, everything hasn't completely dried yet. It's still drying. There's a good skin on the cement at this point. But all I'm doing is taking this putty knife, this painter's knife. And I'm simply taking the wet cement that I've got and I'm filling in the cracks and drawing the knife, smoothing everything. And I also use a bottle of water to spray it to help further smooth the cement into all the cracks and the adjacent areas so that the cement feathers out smooth on the edges. And when this all completely dries, we'll simply take it and sand it with a sander and make everything smooth. Just like that. Perfect. So I'm in day three of building this uh, switch yard project and the cement has dried overnight and it's all very smooth. I use this disc of 80 grit sandpaper and I sanded the entire diorama just to smooth things out after the cracks were repaired because this material does crack on its initial first application and then you go back and you can patch it like we did, like I showed you. I also used a hacksaw blade, this cut off hacksaw blade right here, and I ran it in the grooves where the real flanges will go so that it makes it very easy to just drop a freight car onto the scene now. And just like that, it's on the track. And everything's smooth, everything's just the way we want it to be for the photos. So now it's time to make the diorama a little bit darker, the cement work, and I like to do that using India ink. And India ink is simply what it says, black India ink. You can get this at the art store. It's a very strong black liquid. Now I've got a jar of India ink that I've been using for well over 15 or 20 years. And all I do is I add a little bit of alcohol to it and a few more drops of India ink to it every couple of years and it keeps on going. So I'm going to do that now and I want to show you exactly how that process works as I bring the camera down into position. Here's the jar that I put the India ink in. I'm going to use this dropper and I'm simply going to drop in one eyedropper of India ink into the bottle. OK, 
Okay, I'm not using an eyedropper. I'm just going to pour it in directly. Just a little bit, just like that. Doesn't take much. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the bottle with some fresh alcohol that I just picked up from the drugstore. This is a 71% alcohol. And just pour it in there just like that. And shake it up. And that will give me a nice dark coating of the India ink which will soak into the cement and give me the effect of darker weathered pavement. As I pull the camera back, I like to use this, and this is a brand new fresh uh, two inch paintbrush. And here's how I do this. I want an even coat on the entire scene. I'm gonna test it here on the side, and it looks good. So I'm just going to simply apply this Indy ink to the diorama, just like this, wetting everything. See how the cracks just are accented? Just like this. It's looking good. I like the way that looks. And everything is now coated equally and evenly. Gives a nice darker effect. It's going to look great in outdoor sunlight. And that's it. All I do now is let this dry for about an hour. And then we'll go to the other side and start ballasting and putting down dirt. And finish the other side of this diorama so that it will be ready to shoot tomorrow. First afternoon sun. So. Let's let this dry and we'll continue on with the rest of the scenery on this diorama. So we're almost up to the final step in the process and that is adding dirt. And for this I'm going to use real backyard dirt that I have been sifting uh, for years and I've got a backstock of that. I'm going to use gray ballast fine from Woodland Scenics. I'm also going to use uh, some light gray ballast to create a road, a gravel road adjacent to the trackage. The India ink is completely dry on this part of the diorama at this point. And so now all I'm going to do is work on this area right here with our dirt and our ballast. I'm going to be using artist paint brushes, a fan brush, and a very nice smooth round brush for spreading the ballast in between the ties evenly and the dirt on the diorama. So let's continue on with that. When I sift out dirt, I'd like it to be relatively even all around the diorama. So I'm going to start with the dirt, and I like to use an old colander to shake the dirt smooth onto the scene, rather than just pouring the dirt out of the container. And as you'll see, this goes very rapidly. Makes a lot of dust in the room. But it's a very good way to do this. I'm putting the dirt next to the cement, next to the concrete work. So that we'll have a smooth transition. Just like that. And I'm also going to put some dirt out on the outside edge here of the trackage. Just like this. Nice, smooth, even. Everything lays out just even using the screen to help spread it. That looks real nice. Just like this. 
there maybe you didn't want to drop those rocks on I'll pick those out in the piece of grass that was my oops moment as we do this live now I'm going to apply the ballast I also want to take my fan brush and what I'll do is I'll brush the dirt off of this cement off of the concrete work smooth just like this so I have a nice even transition in the event the vehicle drives off of the concrete work into the gravel dirt area adjacent to the cement work, the concrete work. It's important to get all the final topography of your layers the way you want them to be because once we put down the glue it's permanent. Everything stays the way you made it. Now I'm going to put down the ballast and I'm going to dump it right out of the container. I like doing it that way. Just like this. Making a nice edge, a nice transition edge between the dirt and the last piece of track here. See that? Now switch yards usually have a multitude of different types of gravel in them and this will be no different. I'll mix up things just a bit and I'll come over it with some paint and weather this yard after all the glue is completely dry and the ballast is dry. And that'll be the final step in our process of building the scene and she'll be ready to photograph tomorrow outdoors. There's no magic to this. Try to make it even. It'll be less brush work. The more even you make it in this stage of application, the less brushing you'll have to do with the paintbrush to smooth things out just right. Okay. And I envision a gravel road of some type, assuming it's limestone, a different stone than when the railroad brought in with the freight cars for the yard. So I'm applying this lighter coat of limestone which will weather it all together so it all blends and evenly looks sort of okay for this service access road that I envision would be on this side of the yard. And just like that we take our fan brush and we start brushing it smooth between the ties evenly, gently. This part could take a while. This could take me probably 30 minutes to sit here and brush this all out just right. So what I'll do is I'll stop the camera as I do this portion of brushing things out. The process is straightforward and simple. And then I'll bring you back when it gets time ready to put the dirt, or put the glue onto the dirt. So here we are. One more step, almost finished. And the whole thing is looking pretty darn nice right now. I'm adding just a small amount of light green and medium green vegetation to the dirt areas on this diorama and a little bit on top of the trackage because you know what this stuff grows everywhere it just does in nature and it'll add some depth to the overall scene after the glue dries I do this on every diorama just a little bit Just like that. And then I'm going to come in and do a final uh, brushing with the artist brush. Just to, actually I'm going to blow it, just to get it off of the pavement nicely like this. And that pretty much finalizes everything with regards to the diorama. Everything's looking good. The ballast is down. The India ink looks good on the concrete work. And the yard, all the trackage looks good. So at this point, we almost have a completed scene here. 
complete with dirt, ballast, the yard trackage is, everything looks good, a little bit of weathering with some paint, but the next step now is to take all of this and glue it all down with a couple bottles of uh, Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement, um, which I'm going to mix a bottle of it now. Generally what I like to do is put it into one of these sprayers, run it on fine mist. I'll pour two containers of Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement into this bottle and we're going to wet the whole diorama, including the cement work. Because when you wet this concrete work, what the Woodland Scenic Cement does is it seals it. So if I come along and I put a soda on it or a beer or some drink or any kind of liquid gets on it, it won't discolor the cement. In fact, it protects it just as it adheres and seals all of the ballast. So let's continue on with that. Let me mix a bottle and we'll spray it on and this thing will just have to dry and we're almost finished. So I've got my Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement in this bottle and everything has been mixed. All the chunks, I like to take some screen and get sometimes the chunks of glue that's set up at the bottom of the bottle and don't completely dissolve. I like to screen them out just to make sure that the screen on the spray bottle doesn't get clogged during the process because then we'll have to stop and fix that before we can continue. We want to have a very fine mist on this as so it doesn't disturb the dirt and the walnut shell ballast. So I'm going to hold this now up above the diorama and let me see if I can get a good camera position for you to see me do this. Such is live video. And I'm going to hold this up now and spray this onto the scene just like this. I've got a piece of wood, i got a drop cloth on the table, and it's okay again if this glue gets all over that cement, that's what we want. And if you're going to spray the cement, you got to do it evenly so you don't get any uneven coloring in the cement. We want everything to be, have the same continuity of wetness at this point. The ballast, the dirt, the ground foam is going to get soaked very liberally. I've got two 8 ounce bottles in this right now of Woodland Scenic, scenic Cement, but we're probably not going to use all of that. I just have a feeling. You want it to soak in. So if you're an eighth of an inch deep with material, you want to do the best you can. And this, the reason I use Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement is because it's already got a wetting agent built into it, mixed in, which really lets it soak into the walnut shell ballast and the dirt nicely. I'm going to spray this until the diorama looks white, and then we'll let it dry overnight. Nice, just like that. All the cement has got the Woodland Scenic cement on it, the glue. The cement work has got the white glue on it. What I do like to do before it all sets up is I like to come across the cement now with a paper towel and just wipe up the excess white glue so it doesn't give me a thicker possible white dried effect. So I'm just going to wipe this off with a paper towel briefly. And that's all there is to it. So the Woodland Scenic Scenic Cement has been drying for about four hours. 
I got a couple little fans on it helping to speed up the process. But I want to take this Rust-Oleum camouflage paint now and I want to just go over the scene a little bit just to weather up the trackage on this side of the diorama. So what I want to do is just, I'm not using an airbrush obviously, I'm using a can of paint because it works. And I'm just going to just spray just to kind of blend the colors and bring it all into a nice weathered. See that? Running right down the center of the tracks. And this works really well for weathering a yard area. Just like that. Subtle. Just to blend things together a little bit. There's one characteristic of woodland scenics ballast that used to drive Athern trains crazy when I had the ballast on the side of the rail where it's not supposed to be. And that's because when we spray on the woodland scenics um, glue, what it does is sometimes the water is beating up along the side of the rail and some of the ballast is attracted up with that and therefore the ballast is then glued to the side of the rail. As I can share with you this freight car on the new section we just built, listen to this. What that is, is ballast buildup on the inside. And there's no easier way to do it than simply take your fingernail or your thumbnail and run it up along the side of the rail on the inside and the outside. And that'll remove any of the walnut shell ballast or in the, if you use rocks, the same differentiation, whereas it will be cleaned right off. It's as simple as that. But if you don't do it and you go outside and take photographs of your models, um, here we are with ballast stuck to the side of the rail, which is not at all prototypically correct at all. It's not, it's not the way, it's not the way things work. So other than that, that's just another quick tip as this scene is now drying and I'm starting to take out some models, which we'll be shooting over the next three days on this brand new scene that we just built. So after four days of building this beautiful diorama, today I finally have taken it outside and doing a photo shoot with it. I'm shooting some beautiful safe pack auto racks from ROKA prototype models. And these models are absolutely beautiful. The diorama itself worked out really well in that I've got the switch yard on one side as planned to shoot photos. And then on the other side, I've got the cement apron in which for some of the photographs, um, I used a ramp that Mike Buddy had built to help illustrate and show off these freight cars. The models themselves are absolutely amazing. You can check these models out on a What's Neat show that ran in the middle of December when these models were announced and shared with the public for the very first time. The diorama, again, is working very well. The cement apron in the background is set up so I could actually put buildings on it that would complement this yard trackage area right here. It will reverse the diorama and shoot the cement apron areas and I can still put buildings on top of this track work here if I still wanted to have a different type of background. Beautiful day to be doing a shoot with this brand new diorama and all of the techniques and tricks that we use to build this could be used on a permanent home layout and or a diorama for you to shoot outdoor photos with. And so with that, that is this segment on diorama construction for this January's What's Neat.
For this special segment of What's Neat for January 2023, I've got Larry Harrington all the way from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania from Bachman Industries here to tell us about some amazing new products. Is that right? Yes, yeah, so some stuff we talked about before, but um, it's it's still relevant and it's, it's coming to your door really soon. So um, hope you had a really good holiday, Ken. I did. Um, it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's getting really cold now so we'll talk about a few things uh, first off um, the dash nines large scale should be getting to you pretty soon we're just uh, they should have left the water um, as we taped we got the production samples flown in beautiful here's here's one I barely can get it on the screen I brought two samples with me today because they're so big I could barely fit them in the room with me so uh, these things weigh um, 11 pounds each um, they have four motors in them. They pull a ton. And I brought the Santa Fe. I'll set that down here. And I got the – there's a couple detail parts that I didn't put on because these are fresh out of the box. Right. Like like the antennas and stuff. But I just uh, – so they're not missing those things. But there's the – there's a view of the CSX front on there. Absolutely gorgeous. A lot of detail, a lot of extra parts on the top too. You can, Try to get this in the screen here. It's hard. So yes, but, I need I need to make sure the Garden Railroad is constantly in perfect repair so that I can right. videotape those so, things running. So there's some neat features about this. The, the center pops off on the top of the roof here, and when you get you have um, a lot of options that you can you hold it up just the screen. Down there you go. So you can perfect. There you go. It. There's a, a control panel in there, and you can turn on lights, smoke. Uh, battery powered, polarity, a number of things there. So it's easy to get to. You don't have to take your whole locomotive apart. You just basically snap the roof back on when you're done. So it just pops right back on. So, nice. So that's that's coming to you soon. I know we've said that a couple of times, but um, good things take time to do. So No, that's um, an awesome thing. Thank you for sharing so, that. So um, one thing, it does come with a, an adapter. Um, that shows that plugs in. You can hook up just about any type of um, command system that you have. So um, it's we're all excited about this. This is a, our first one to 29th diesel locomotive, and um, we we have really good response so far. So we can't wait to get them out to the dealers and consumers and see them on the garden railways. So every model railroader should have one of those, if nothing else, on their mantle. Right, exactly. It's a beautiful piece. It's, it's a beautiful piece, exactly. Um, so this is the time of the year when you're, it's cold and nasty, and you're stuck inside your house. <laughs> so what, what is there to do besides model railroading? Um, so I just wanted to remind everybody of a lot of the products that we have to expand upon your model railroad. Um, first of all, we have, you want to make your model railroad bigger, you need track. We have Easy Track and HO. Actually, in three different styles. This is our um, nickel silver track. This is if you have a starter set. This is our steel alloy. This is a this is all black, and it um, will match up. All these will connect together, so it doesn't matter as far as interconnectivity, but just to, to match the style that you have. And we're just shipping. Um, we just shipped in December the the city sprinter set, and this was the first set. That came with our concrete tie track. Nice. So we have extra, you know, we have extra track that you can add onto that set as well. Um, so I don't know how many SKUs, I didn't look up how many SKUs that we have, but our track selection is tremendous. So we also came out last year with um, bridges. These are the um, easy track bridges that you can just plug right in. They have the connectors and snaps right into your easy track. Wow. Uh, we, we did them in, uh, I believe, five different road names or decorations. Um, so, and, and that keeps expanding. And we also announced that in N-Scale at NMRA. So um, it's, it's been a very popular item. And we do have an N-Scale. We have, I'm upside down here, we got N-Scale track. Very nice. Um, and again, a number of SKUs. We have turnouts. We have, um, in HO, we have, um, DCC equipped turnouts, but we also have uh, a DCC control box, which I didn't bring with me today, that has that you can um, convert basically your analog 
um, electrically operated tracks into a DCC turnout. So Very it just cool. plugs in. If you have the original control control box on your control panel, you just basically unplug the the wires and plug the new one in. It's the exact same footprint, and it's it's easy to program. It takes about thirty seconds to program a DCC switch. Um, and then, of course, once you get the track down, you're going to need to do some landscaping. So we have trees in a numerous sizes. This is one of our smaller trees. This is a two inch, the two and a quarter inch walnut tree. And it's listed as N scale, but I, I um, like to say that, you know, scale trees have no scale. This is That's one true. of our larger trees. This is listed under O scale as an eight to 10 inch conifer tree. But again, trees grow in all sizes, the small ones. If you have a larger layout, you can use your end scale for your shrubbery trees that around the houses and your um, layout or, you know, urban scenes where the trees line the streets and stuff like that. So there is no scale. You just uh, use what you need for your application. And we have a large variety of trees to choose from. And of course, um, we have some figures as well. And this showing some HO. We have them in HO and a HO and O scale and a few in N, but not many. And then um, here is another example. These are great for passenger cars. Yes. You put these, they, they're in there so they fit perfectly in the seats. And here's another set that we have there. So that's just three examples. We have a, a good number of examples of um, things to use for your, your layout. Um, also, we have some detailed structures. These are our resin structures. Those are beautiful. Yeah, this is, comes with some signage that you can um, modify and put on your uh, your name of your town on there. And, uh, well, I can't forget this. This is what started it all for us in, in trains was our plastic bell line. Yes. Uh, we just celebrated our 75th anniversary, and we have numerous structures in N, HO, and O scale. Back, this started, I believe, in 1946 or so. Or, or, um, so... It's been been around for a good long time. So this is, like I said, this is a time, it's a great time of the year to, to concentrate on your layout. You don't have any yard work to do. You may have to shovel snow every once in a while. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, you got plenty of time to play with your layout and get things tweaked and, and enjoy it because this is the time of the year that you're not, um, unless you're traveling, it's uh, you're stuck inside. So you might as well have a good time with it. That's very true. And all the viewers can see the people, the scenescape line of trees, the uh, easy track line, and all of the products that you described at your website. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. And that website is? This website is, uh, if you want to go right to the store, it's shop.bachmantrains.com, or you can just go to bachmantrains.com on our website and go and search through the menus. And That's find very what you true. Need. And after you can also go to our, I, I didn't mention, but you, know, you're, you also may want to be tuning up your your locomotives and things, and you need parts. We have a good selection of parts from our website as well. So um, you can get what you need. If it's in stock, you can, if it's not um, shown in stock, you can always give our service department a call or email, and they will be happy to assist you. There you go. And with regards to after you've gone through the Bachman website and you find out what you want, the show sponsor, Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, you can find your products there, and they'll ship them out right away as soon as you place your order. Well, that's all I have for today. Um, I just want everybody to have a good time. I hope they uh, survive the winter and we can uh, <laughs> yes. see you at a show soon. Well, should be, we should be doing the Springfield show in Massachusetts and the Amherst Modelers Society. That's a great show every year. We see all the serious modelers there. They, they're always excited to come to our booth and uh, check out all the new things we have to show. So uh, looking forward to seeing our friends in Massachusetts soon. So. It's a fantastic show. Larry, thank you so much for presenting uh, these wonderful new products uh, for this January uh, What's Neat, and we just always look forward to what it is you've got to share. Thanks. We should be having some new test shots coming up in the near future of some of the new projects we announced at NRA, and, uh, and we will be happy to bring them on the show as well. So Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Larry, and that is the segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. And by Roca Prototype Models. We make it real. 
Check out their website at www.rocamodels.com.